Let me tell you about the top five mistakes I made when starting with Flutter. Number one, I didn't fully understand what was meant by everything was a widget or further that everything can be a widget. So basically, if you're ever creating a function that is going to be used within a view, you should ask yourself, why not just create this as a stateless widget? And then that stateless widget can be a little bit more reusable and used throughout other parts of your app. The second thing is not using a state management package like provider or river pod or get X or block. Any of those are okay options. But when I was first starting, I was actually not even using provider. I was just using this inherited widget and basically making my own custom provider. Now that's completely fine and you can choose to do that, but it's much better to actually just use one of these packages that are more full featured and can let you develop better state management techniques within your app. I did go ahead and start using the actual provider package for a while and that was great. Definitely a step up from just the inherited widget, but now I've been using Riverpod and I find that it is a lot better than just regular provider, but I think any of the major state management tools will be much better than just using an inherited widget. The third mistake I made that I spent a lot of time correcting was not using theme data. So Flutter does have built in theme data where you can mainly set colors and textiles and different theme aspects of your app. Now where this really comes in handy is if you wanna do dark mode and light mode, you can set all the colors through the theme data and then you can easily just toggle dark mode and light mode and change the colors within the theme itself and not have to go and change any of the colors within your app. So if you find yourself writing colors.white or colors.black or any color within your app code, that should be a trigger to question whether or not you should start using theme data and put all the colors in one location, which would be your theme. This also works for text styling as well and a bunch of other app theme specific things. So it definitely makes styling your app easier. And especially when you go through iterations of style changes, it makes it easier to change everything in one location. The fourth mistake I made is that I did not do a good job of separating out concerns. And this is probably one of the major ones and most confusing for people that I think followed any of my YouTube videos. So there were several files where I would have a call to Firebase essentially inside a build method and basically have one file for a view and have that also interact with Firebase and maybe interact with another API. It was just very unstructured and confusing. So there was no actual app architecture in place. This definitely makes the app harder to read and modify the code. Essentially, you want all the business logic in one location, and then you want all the view logic in another location. That term business logic just means that it's the logic around actually making your app function. And the view logic is the display code or essentially what would be in any build method of a widget. The last main issue I ran into when starting was being a little bit too dependent on Firebase. Now, Firebase is great, and especially when you're starting out, I highly recommend using it. But if you ever decide later to switch, you do wanna be able to kind of easily switch and not have to worry about ripping apart all your code and rewriting a lot of stuff. So now when I program something out, I wanna make sure all my Firebase code or any backend specific code is in one location and it's also kind of wrapped around a provider of sorts so that it can easily be switched out later. So now if I'm making a call to Firebase, let's say to get a user, I'll wrap that in a function called get user. And then within that function, make the call to Firebase. Then later, if I want to make a call to a different service, such as a Django backend, I can still use that get user function, but just change out the interior. So instead of calling Firebase, I would just call the Django backend. And this will allow me to use get user throughout my app and not have to worry about using Firebase or Django in any of the other areas of my app. So this is definitely related to separating out concerns, but Firebase, if that is what you're using initially, it should be completely separate from your view code. If you are interested in learning more about app architecture and how to essentially lay out your apps in a better way, then I would highly recommend the Flutter Foundations course on Code with Andrea, which I will link down below. This is going to go over using a feature first app architecture, as well as going in depth with Riverpod and how to use that for state management within your app, Go Router, error handling, setting up some automated testing, search, and a ton more. So if you are interested in upping your Flutter skills, I would highly recommend this course. It definitely changed the way I look at programming in Flutter, and I would 
100% highly recommend it. Hopefully you found this video useful and hopefully you can avoid some of these mistakes in your Flutter journey. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions. All right, ciao for now.